Yo, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's Egal Talks Football. We're back again with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Arsenal 2, Leon Nil in the final preseason game of Arsenal's preseason. So let's get straight into it. What happened in this game? What did we learn today? What did we see today? And of course, I'm very excited for the new season. How are you guys feeling about the new season? Are you guys excited? Obviously, we need to still do a lot of transfers. We're going to talk about that. But before we go any further, please do hit that like button on this video. Please do hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. And let's get straight into it. First thing we need to discuss is the lineup. So the thing about the Arsenal lineup is that I think this is going to be the potential lineup to start the first game of the season. So Arsenal is Arteta is basically giving us a leaked information on what the lineup is going to be for the first game by playing this lineup. I don't think he's going to play a different lineup than this in the first game of the season versus Wolves. I expect Zinchenko to start versus, uh, versus Wolves. I expect uh, Thomas Partey to start, of course, since we have not signed Mikel Moreno yet. I expect it to be Havertz, Martinelli, and and of course, Bakayo Saka. The only way I would have said Martinelli would have came out was, we're actually, we're going to talk about Martinelli in a second. But before we go there, this is the lineup, and I am not surprised that this is the lineup. I think this is going to be Arsenal's 11 that we start with to start the season. First of all, Timber is still injured. Calafiri just signed. Tom Yas was injured. So it does make sense that Zinchenko is the starting left back to start the season. So first thing we learned today is what the starting lineup is going to be for the remainder of, not the remainder of the season, but the end of the preseason usually is the, is the lineup that you start with to start the season. So that's the first thing we're going to talk about. Now, number two. Number two, we need to speak about certain Gabriel Magalesh and William Saliba. Amazing centre-back pairing and probably one of the best centre-back pairings in the Premier League. And these guys also are set-piece threats. When I say set piece threats, they are elite set piece threats. William Saliba and Gabriel Magales both scoring beautiful head, uh, be beautiful goals from the corners. Each one getting their chance, taking it well, and of course, Declan Rice was also massively involved in that corner. I need to give credit to a certain man, and that man is Nicholas, Nicholas Yo uh, uh, Yover, Arsenal's Arsenal set piece coach. Arsenal set piece coach needs to be given a massive raise. This man is valuable to Arsenal, I immense value. Since he's come into the club, we have had the most successful team at defending and scoring set pieces. Nicholas Jover is a key piece to this Arsenal side, and set pieces going into next season will be another massive cog in Arsenal side once again. Second year in a row, you're going to see Arsenal making massive strides towards getting those set pieces and scoring those set pieces at a high rate. And I do think this is sustainable. People say you can't sustain set piece goals all the time. Well, at the rate that we're scoring them at, this is sustainable in my opinion because Declan Rice has shown he can deliver an amazing cross. And, and on top of that, these defenders and attacking players have shown that they will continuously score set piece goals. For, and I we need to give a lot of credit to Nicholas Yover as he's one of the key reasons why we are doing this. Now, outside of that, we're going to talk about the rest of the game in a second. But quickly, I just want to say Declan Rice... He is impressing me, and people constantly making fun of his passing. His crossing ability from those corners are immense, and since he's been put on corner duty since the back end of last season after we came back from Dubai, he has been getting assist after assist after assist. Don't be surprised if he doesn't get like four to maybe six assists from now to the end of the season, uh, from now to uh, from now on, you're going to see him getting assists and being on those corners. Whenever it's on the left side, don't be surprised that he's the one on the corners because he has a nice cross with his right foot into the box. But yeah, that is enough about Declan Rice. Let's talk about the actual game stats and what happened in the game before we talk about substitutions and everybody else and individuals. Um, the game was very interesting because we were dominating them. We dominated possession. We dominated Leon. And we didn't really capitalize on our chances. If you see here, with the amount of shots that we had, we only had six on target. 
and we never scored any goals from open play. We had numerous chances, in my opinion, with Martinelli's chance, Havertz having a half chance after Martinelli sent it past the ball to him quite poor, and Bakayo Saka could have easily scored two headers if if he gets better, a little bit better at heading the ball. First, I'm going to speak about Bakayo Saka. Bakayo Saka is not that good in the air. But if he can improve that part of his game, that could add two to three or maybe even four goals a season. And that would be massive for Arsenal. So maybe because I can need to improve a little bit on that. Martinelli needs to improve on his end product, being passing and scoring goals. He did not do so well last season. We gave him a break. Hopefully this season, once we get Mikel Moreno in and somebody to play on that left side, he can do a little bit better and be a little bit more polished because today he was quite poor, both setting up, trying to set up Havertz, and in my opinion, the weight on that pass was quite poor, the one that he set up for Havertz, and also his shots. He's not really scoring it at this moment in time. So give him a chance, wait. And let's see, once the season starts, hopefully he can get himself going. He can be a little bit more of a cerebral assassin, a little bit more of a killer like he was two years ago in that final third. <clears throat> what else is next? Um, oh, we got a debut. We got a debut from Calafuri. Yes, we got a debut from Calafuri, ladies and gentlemen. And I was excited to see Calafuri. I was happy to see Calafuri. Uh, for the Arsenal for the first time, and it was at the Emirates too, in front of a raucous crowd. He didn't play too much minutes, so we're not gonna we're not gonna say, oh, yeah, we've seen enough because he barely played a left back. Uh, he barely did much. Uh, it was like, it, it is what it is. It's a preseason game. You're not gonna get all all the minutes, right? But for this short time period that he was there, he he did not look like he was really ready for the season. So. He's not going to start right away. I think he's going to get eased into the team. So don't don't panic, Arsenal fans. It's not the end of the world if you don't see him in the first game versus Wolves. Because don't forget, he he apparently he was even doubtful for this game. But we'll see. I, I think it's just precaution. Same with Timber, precaution, not a serious injury. The only person at Arsenal right now that is seriously injured is Kieran Tierney. He has a thigh injury. So nothing to really worry about there, in my opinion. But yeah, um, another thing that I wanted to talk about quickly before we move on is it's very interesting that we see Ethan Winery and uh, what do you call it, Maslu Skelly get a lot of game time for for the entirety of the preseason. And now Arsenal have announced that they, uh, or, or Mikel Arteta has announced that he will have them part of the plans for the, uh, for the re- remainder of the season. This was reported by Football London. So this is, uh, let me show you guys what they reported before we move on. This is big news also. Reported that things can change in football, but as far as the current plan, it's both Ethan uh, uh, Ethan uh, Waneri and Miles Lewis Squilly are going to be in the first team this season. And both 17 year olds are looking really impactful in the first team already. So we're going to see how much game time they get, but they will be part of the team. They will be part of the team. But yeah. And then finally, the final thing that we need to speak about. We spoke about Martinelli. We spoke about everything else. We need to see more signings. But before but before we get into that, I'm going to do a whole video separately on that. Let me know what you guys think. The final thing that I wanted to speak about is Aaron Ramsdale did not even take off his track suit once this whole preseason. What are we doing with him? Honestly, what are we doing with Aaron Ramso? We need to sell him. We need to sell him ASAP. Because if this guy's not going to even get a single minute in preseason, when is he going to ever play? He's just going to depreciate his value even more and more. But yeah, that's it for today. Nothing else to really talk about on this side of things. I will go in more depth in general, and I'll be doing more previews and everything else. But I think the dominant display that we showed on the pitch, we should have scored more goals. We should have created more. Uh, we should have got more goals from it. We left a lot on the table, as I said. Martinelli, Bakayo Saka, Kai Havertz. They need to be a little bit more clinical and a little bit more cerebral in the final third. And hopefully, we can maybe go sign a striker as Edu. Big exciting news. I'll I'll speak on it in my next video. You guys go check it out. I'm gonna do an Arsenal transfer video right after this. But yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day. And this was my Arsenal Leon match reaction. Peace. <laughs>